1.7 billion people in the world, out of which 3 billion people are armed entities worldwide. And in developing countries like India and China, there are about 2.4 million people. Let's look at our country, India. In India, there are about 0.5 million, that's like half a million people who are armed entities. So, there are three categories of armed entities. They are, firstly, there are armed entities who have lost their wrists or hand, this part of their body, this part of their arm. Then, there are people who have lost their arm below their shoulder. And then there are people who have lost, lost their arm between the elbow and the wrist, that is this part. So, first category is the wrist, second category is this, third category is the below the shoulder, and fourth category is above shoulder, that is above this part. So there are four categories. So what are we trying to focus on? We're trying to focus on the first three categories. That pretty much comes up to 92% of the total arm amputees in the world. Now, in India, there are about 0.46 million people who fit this kind of, who, with, who, who fits into these three categories. So uh, why did we take this? Uh, why did we decide or resolve to solve this problem? We did so because we are in the 10th, 21st century today and there are so many problems that are being solved, cancer. So we are acting on this problem to come up with a solution that can change and impact the society. There are numerous ways of solving this problem. There are so many artificial limbs available in the market. They are like eye limb and uh, cosmetic limb. So these two limbs are a couple of the limbs that are there in society and there are more also in the market. But any limb can be based on two constraints. I would give two constraints then. One is the constraint of affordability and the constraint of controllability. So what are these constraints? Affordability, simple. Every economic strata of the society should be able to afford it, whether he's poor, whether he's rich, whether he's middle class. Second is the constraint of controllability. We should be able to give it the good amount of control that other arms are also providing. So we're trying to optimize the cost and give equal equivalent performances as other better advanced hands. So, well, how does our arm work? Our arm is, is not brain controlled, but it's rather voice controlled. So, it's a voice controlled prosthetic arm. So, we give a voice input, that is, it could be like, uh, you know, making a call or grabbing a glass of water, or it could be uh, handshaking with someone and so forth. So, these kind of functions can be achieved by giving voice commands. Now, what are the TI components? The components are, first, beagle bone plaque. This is the central of our system. It is the microcontroller chip that is used and programmed accordingly to move the motors up and down to move the arms. Second, the EZVR module. The EZVR module is where we give our voice input, which will recognize our voice input. Based on that, it will drive the motors up and down, finally rotating or moving the arms. And we also have, how are the motors driven? The motors are driven through an IC, which is the L2953, L2930. The L2930D will help rotate the motors accordingly. So let's move to the working principle of this. As you can see here, these are the main TI components. Firstly is the beagle bone black, the L2953D connected here on a breadboard, as you can see here. And then next, this is the prosthetic arm setup. Now, we have also used an additional module that is the EZVR for the voice recognition. So, how does this work? Let me first explain to the working. So, uh, when I give a voice input, that is, I give a command, the EZVR module recognizes that command. It is interfaced with the beagle bone. The beagle bone accesses this voice input and it is programmed in such a way that on basis of a command given from the EZVR, it will control the, uh, the movement, the the L2953D IC. Now the L2953D as I said is the one that controls the movement of the motors, the stepper motors. So, so what actually should happen is that the EZVR module, for example if I say up or down, it should send it to the beagle bone and accordingly it's coded and then it goes to the L2953D which moves accordingly depending on the action. So, so let's, let's look at the working. Now, when I say up, up, Stop. Down. Stop. As you've seen here, we have achieved the upward and downward motion of the prosthetic arm. 
using the voice as an input. In the working of this prototype, the upward and downward movement have been achieved. Now we would go on in our product to explore different functions like grabbing a glass of water, uh, handing a call, etc. Anything that a healthy human being can do, we will enable the disabled to do with this voice control prosthetic arm. I would like to conclude saying that this is not a technological, this might be a technological uh, solution to a very so society oriented problem. This could impact lives. This could change those lives of those crippled arm amputees. You, you could give an arm to an arm amputee for showing his love through a hug. You could give an arm to an amputee through, his, through, through the ability to write. You could give an arm to give him the ability to make such inventions. These are, the, these are just a couple of things you could do. Giving an arm to an arm amputee could completely change his life. I, I would like to end the quote, which once a great man had said, God helps those who help themselves. But in this segment, I would like to rephrase that quote. God helps those engineers who change the society. Thank you.